Hi everyone, this is Mrs. J, and today we're going to learn about optimization. All right, I have a quick warm up for you guys, so please pause the video and give it a try. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so here you can see the work with our original function, um, finding the x-intercepts and the y-intercept. Here you do need to use um, rational root theorem to find one of your zeros, um, and then the remaining polynomial is factorable. Um, and we do have a double root at one zero, so we know for polynomials that we'll touch and turn. Here's our y-intercept, and then we can move on to our first derivative analysis. So here's our first derivative. Um, our critical numbers, uh, would be when it's either undefined or zero, so that only occurs at negative one and one. So you can see here's the sign analysis of my first derivative telling us that our graph um, is increasing from negative one to one, decreasing negative infinity, negative one and one to infinity, and since it is changing signs, here we're gonna have a relative minimum, so you plug that value into your function. Um, here's your relative minimum, and here, because you're changing from increasing to decreasing, we have a relative maximum. Um, and then we can move on to our second derivative analysis. So here's our second derivative, which is never undefined, so we can find when it's equal to zero. That occurs at zero. Um, so here's our sign analysis telling us our graph is concave up um, to the left of zero and concave down to the right of zero. And because it is changing concavity, um, this point, zero, negative two-thirds, is our point of inflection. So if you put all of that together, you get a graph, a nice polynomial graph that looks just like this. Okay, so today we're going to talk about optimization, um, which is finding the optimal value of a function, um, which uh, many times will occur at a maximum or minimum, which is what we've been focusing a lot of our attention on, is how to find that relative max or min. Um, so as we're going through these problems, you're always gonna first wanna determine what are you trying to optimize? So that's always gonna be where we start just to kind of understand the context of the question. And then you're going to need to write a primary equation. Um, you wanna make sure that there's only two variables in your equation. One of them should be the quantity that you want to optimize and then the other can be an additional variable. And then from there, we're gonna use calculus um, to do some first derivative analysis um, to help us find the maximum or minimum values that we are going to be looking for to help us optimize our function. All right, let's give this first one a try together. Um, so we're gonna find the point on this line that is closest to the origin. Um, so first we need to understand the context of the problem. So we have the linear equation y equals negative two x plus eight, um, where if you sketch a quick picture of that, uh, it would look something like this. Our y-intercept is at 8. Our slope is negative 2. Again, this is just a really rough sketch. So we, they want us to find the point, any point on our graph, I'll just call it x, y, that is the closest to the origin. So this word closest will give us a hint as to how we're going to optimize this function. So here's our origin. So they want us to find essentially the smallest or the minimum distance between the origin and our line. Um, so I'm gonna call this the distance. So they essentially want us to minimize that distance, which I am calling um, D. And we know that we can describe the distance between any two points using our distance formula. So that can be the general formula that we um, complete. So it's gonna be the square root of um, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's just our distance formula. But you'll see here that we actually have three variables. Um, we do want to leave um, the variable d because this is the one we're trying to optimize. We're trying to minimize that value. So we need to look at these and say, hey, is there some way I can rewrite one in terms of the other? And we know that we can substitute y for negative 2x plus 8. So then we just have a two variable equation, which is good. And we can simplify that a little bit because we are going to be taking the derivative. So we have plus four x squared minus 32 x plus 64. So our general function is five x squared minus 32 x plus 64. 
But again, we are trying to minimize um, this value. Um, so we're going to want to take um, the derivative. So we'll take d, well, d, d, dx, the derivative of d um, in terms of x. Um, so here we will have 1 over 2 times the square root of 5x squared minus 32x plus 64. But remember, we do need to do the chain rule here. So we need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside of a radical, so 10x um, minus 32. And then if we simplify, um, you see that we can divide each of these numbers by 2. Here's our derivative. Uh, so we have 5x minus 16 over the square root. Okay, so we know that um, relative or absolute mins and maxes will occur um, when at our critical numbers, which is when our derivative is either um, zero or undefined. Um, so we can check to see when it is undefined. Um, so we can take our denominator and say, hey, is our denominator ever zero? Um, so what I would do is I would actually um, just check first using the discriminant to see if it is ever equal to zero. Um, so negative 32 squared minus 4 times 5 times 64. Um, and here this value um, is a negative number. Um, it ends up being negative 256. Um, so since our discriminant is less than zero, that means that we have, um, there are no real zeros, so this will never cross the x-axis and it will never be, um, it will never be equal to zero. Um, so that means that our derivative is never undefined. Is never undefined. So that means that our only critical number will come when our derivative is equal to zero. And of course, a fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So our critical number is 16 fifths. So just to make sure that this is actually a minimum, we should do our sign analysis of our derivative. So if you substitute a value to the left, um, you'll see that our function, or our first derivative is negative, and any value to the right will give us a positive. So here you can see that we're changing from um, negative to positive, so that means our function is changing from decreasing to increasing. And um, since this is the only time our function is um, changing um, from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, we know that this is actually going to be not only a relative minimum, but also an absolute minimum. Um, because I know everything after that is just going to keep um, increasing. It's never going to turn around again. Um, so this is our um, absolute minimum value, which does help us optimize uh, for this problem. So we would want to figure out what that um, full coordinate is. So you need to go back to your original function and plug in 16 fifths. So if you plug in 16 fifths into, again, our original function, uh, we would get 8 fifths. So that tells us that the point on the line 2x plus y equals 8 that is closest to the origin is 16 fifths, 8 fifths. And that would be our final answer. All right, let's try one more together. So here we have a box with a square base and an open top must have a volume of 32,000 centimeters cubed. Find the dimensions of the box that minimize the amount of material used to make the box. Um, so first we need to figure out what um, the context of this problem is. So we have um, a box with a square base. So if the base is square, that tells us that these two dimensions are the same, um, but as we um, raise the box. We don't know what this height is. It doesn't need to be the same as x, so I'm going to give it a new variable. I'll call this one y. Um, so these dimensions are the same because, again, the base is square, but this dimension we don't know, so we call it y. Um, so they say that they would like us to minimize, so that's how we know it's an optimization problem, um, the amount of material used to make the box. 
which is essentially the surface area of our box, which remember does not have a top. So they really just want us to mi minimize, um, so again, the surface area of our box, which would be the bottom of our box and the four sides of our box. So that would be the surface area and we want the smallest amount of material, so the smallest surface area. Um, so we can describe the surface area of our box um, uh, by doing, well this, we know the base is x times x, so x squared, and then we know that each side of our box is um, x times y, so it would be 4xy. And again, we don't have the top, which is why we only have a single x squared. Um, so here's our surface area, but again, we have um, three different variables. We have sa, which I'm just counting as a single variable, um, and then we have x and y. So we need to find a way to rewrite um, x or y in terms of the other. So you kind of look back at your original equation and say, okay, what other information do I have? Oh, I know that the volume is 32,000 centimeters um, cubed. So we know that the volume of a rectangular prism is the length times the width times the height. So it'd be x squared y, and we set that equal to 32,000. And here we could actually just solve for y. Um, it's 32,000 over x squared. Um, and then we can substitute that into our surface area equation. And then it's only in terms of x. So we have x squared um, plus 4x times 32,000 over x squared, which gives us x squared um, plus 128,000 over x. Um, so now we want to minimize this um, function, so we do need to start by finding the derivative. So we could say dsa dx, so the derivative of the surface area in terms of x. Um, so that gives us 2x, um, and then here we have minus 128,000 over x squared, because remember this is just x to the negative 1. And then just to simplify um, our derivative a little bit, I'm going to combine the two terms into a single expression. So it becomes 2x cubed, uh, 2x cubed minus 128,000 over x squared. Um, so for here, we are going to move on to finding the critical numbers. Um, so we know that our critical numbers are when, again, our derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Um, and we know that um, for this derivative that x cannot equal zero. So x equals zero is a critical number. But um, in terms of the context of this problem, um, having a side length of zero just doesn't make sense because then a box literally wouldn't exist. Um, so it doesn't make sense for the context of this problem. So this critical number is not going to be uh, where we minimize that surface area. So the other option for critical number is when our derivative is equal to zero. And we know that a fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. Um, so we're going to set this equal to 0, and we're going to isolate x cubed. So we get x cubed equals 64,000. Um, so if you take the cube root of both sides, we get x equals 40. Um, so we do need to do a little bit of sign analysis just to make sure. Um, so here's our derivative sign analysis. So here's 40. Here's 0. Um, so anything, if you look at um, our derivative, anything to the left of 40, we will get a negative value. And anything to the right of 40, we will get a positive value. Um, so it is changing from um, decreasing to increasing our original function, which means at that point um, we have our uh, minimum. So x equals 40 does minimize um, this function, our surface area function. Um, so that's going to be the answer for the dimension of the base of our box. Um, so if we want the total dimensions for our box, it's going to be 40 centimeters um, by 40 centimeters. And then for the height, um, we can take 40 and plug it in to, for, to find y. So we can say, 
I'll do it over here, y equals 32,000 times 40 squared, um, which is 20. So the height is 20 centimeters. Um, so those are our box dimensions. And then we are all done. All right, so that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.